Welcome to Service Desk. I'm Kim. And I'm Sam. Andrew isn't here because his sister's getting married. So that's exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. But Sam is from my other podcast, Beholder's Eye, and he's our tech expert over there. I I would not call myself an expert, but I definitely do tech. So, <laughs> well, you have lots of knowledge in many things, so that's fun. Thank. You. But uh, this is normally where we ask each other how our days went. Uh, it, do you do anything fun tech related? Uh, not not very often actually at the moment. Uh, things are things are up in the air, but. You know, work is interesting. I work for the uh, U.S. government for the Air Force, and we're getting a Department of Defense inspection. So that's fun. Um, (laughs) That does not sound like fun, but okay. Yeah. If you say so. It's it's not fun at all. It's it's grueling and and horrible. But I think that's that's where I'll leave that before they have to kill me. Um, (laughs) Oh, sure. Sorry. You probably already said too much. (laughs) There's a sniper dot on your forehead. I can see it. My job today was really, really slow. Apparently, banks don't want to do much the day after Labor Day. So no, that was no, they don't delight. They don't they don't at all. Um, and it, it yeah. <laughs> hey, but slow days are better than, you know, other things, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like both once in a while. Yeah, I could use a slow day now. So we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll be good with a slow one in the future. There you go. So normally this is our news section. Do you have anything for us? Well, I was I was looking at some news because I intake an awful lot of tech news and all of it was depressing. So I decided, oh, no, let's not except for except for a couple because I. Uh, OK, yeah, you had me. You're having me here today, I think, for 3D printing. And I thought I would bring some related news, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah. So U.S. Marines, uh, when they when they go out places, they they need barracks and such like that. And. They uh, have now robots, which will 3D print barracks for them in about 40 hours. 40 hours? 40 hours. It will 3D print a barracks out of concrete. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I can't even comprehend. Like, how big of a barracks? Like, how many people does it hold? I, th- I think it's a 12-man barrack, which is, Holy crap. is not huge, but it's definitely, definitely not a small, small feat. I mean, I assume like bunk beds, so yeah, that would be enough for six bunk beds. That's gigantic in forty hours. Yeah, um, I think with it before they were quoting it would take multiple days, almost a week, for them to equip them to the same degree they are now that they can do in forty hours. And this is with um a three D printing robot that has to be manually filled and supplied with material. So once they get it oh. automated that it has like um, its own hopper for its own material, they said that they can get that down to less than a day. Holy crap. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really cool and, and surprisingly on topic for the news. So <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I had more depressing news myself. Uh <laughs> There's malware that makes itself basically look like your bank security measures. So it uh, infects your computer and figures out what bank you're going through. And uh, yeah, it can fake your computer with the logo and all that jazz. And it looks like what you would normally log into. Oh, wow. So yeah, they're they're getting real smart at figuring out how to break into all your bank accounts. Yeah. So yeah, if it's there, somebody will break into it eventually. Unfortunately. <laughs> but that's why we have antivirus and malware scans, and we tell you not to do stupid things. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I don't run antivirus, so I'll take your word for it. No. Uh, uh, no I, I just mess it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might be on the wrong podcast. Uh, no, I, I, um, okay. Actually, no. Why do you not run antivirus, Sam? Oh. Uh, Oh, thank you, Kim, knowing that this is a topic I love to talk about. I run Linux, and in general, you do not need to run sophisticated antivirus, as it's such a small target platform that nobody bothers to make viruses for me, in general. Uh, There are exceptions, like uh, there have been some specifically made on the the 
on the internet to target Linux and, you know, um, basically ransomware attacks, you know, lock up your whole computer uh. and such. Uh, but with the the speed of how most updates and stuff make it to most distributions because they're done by the community. As soon as something hits the internet, you're usually patched against it by the time you encounter it. So Wow. So yay, Linux. Yeah. To, it's just difficult to get your sound working because options. <laughs> that didn't just happen. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 3D printing is a thing that exists in the world. And I know quite a few people that are interested in it, but I always hear the same like, oh, I would really kind of like to get into 3D printing, but I have no idea what to do. So what is it? 3D printing is it, it's the term for actually multiple different technologies that have emerged over the past probably probably 10 years in the consumer space. They've been around actually since the 80s. Um, in oh wow in industry yeah it's just been that machines have been uh multi million dollar machines and they've been uh patented to such a degree that people could never get their hands on the technology um and probably about like within the last decade or so um a lot of patents expired which allowed people to kind of well actually. Basically, a bunch of nerds to build 3D printers in their own garages, <laughs> which uh, kickstarted the whole movement. So it's it's a way of, in most cases, getting some form of a plastic and turning it into a three dimensional object in the real world. Um, cool. Yeah, it's it's so, super fun. So you say nerds build them in their garages? Is this still the way of it? Um. So so a lot of those nerds from the early days have turned in turned into different people with businesses that will build them for you in bigger garages or or factories as people like to call them um <laughs> but but actually in 3d printing there's still a huge uh community of people who build and make them themselves it's called the oh. reprap project actually it basically stands for self-replicating rapid pro prototyping so it's the way of getting 3d printers and using 3d printers to make more 3d printers um yeah so so you're trying to build replicators uh, well should i be concerned uh, maybe if we can make things that you know are actually uh prime time in most cases uh 3d printing isn't ready for large-scale manufacturing in a lot of ways as it's more akin to like prototyping uh some of the things aren't as durable ah. as you'd like but gotcha but getting into it right off the bat there's actually a ton of options now um you can you can buy them from many different companies you can buy kits to build them yourself or you can just go rogue and purchase many parts off the internet and even 3d printed parts <laughs> from other users to make your own uh -oh. Wow, that's inception style printer building. It, it's it's <laughs> it's really fun. Some of the the first projects that actually people who buy 3D printers get into is the one pain point that they have on their printer, they seek to fix that and replace it. So, huh. many people within a week or two, they've found something that they dislike about their printer and they've actively printed a thing to fix that problem for themselves. That's fascinating. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a ton <laughs> okay. of fun. So for the people who maybe aren't quite as, uh, how shall we say, proactive or like make it themselves as far as the printer, what kind of printers exist to just buy off the shelf? So it really depends on, on what you're getting into. There's multiple different technologies. Some use liquid resins and lasers to create tiny, really detailed things. And others use Ooh. basically a glorified hot glue gun that moves around in a three-dimensional space <laughs> to uh, print with plastics. Uh, the, the latter, they're called uh, FDM printers. Okay. And, and those are your most popular and cheapest options on the market for most people. And there's tons of companies that sell them. It seems everybody and their brother is selling a 3D printer nowadays. Does brother also have a 3D printer? I, I would assume so, as they were the ones who held actually <laughs> a ton of the patents before for some of the motion oh. systems. Um, gotcha. Yeah, I, so I would I think so. Um, but yeah, you can go to literally Amazon and you can pick up printers for around $250. Hmm. Yeah, it's not too bad. now. With the whole 
just going out and buying one, quality varies really wild. So you got to be careful uh, and look for reviews and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I know. It's crazy what they've done in the last couple of years. Um, There was a, a printer that hit Kickstarter that was successfully funded that um called the 101 Hero, which was a 3D printer that um you can get for $49 in the Kickstarter. Wow. And it makes things that are generally like, two inches by four inches so okay. so not huge but enough to do what most people end up doing with it which most people who end up with a 3d printer in most cases are are nerds and they want to print little <laughs> knickknacks of things you know and and have just like little thing and and that kind of use case for some of these low-cost machines are are perfect you can you can print huh. out little doctor who tardises all day and and you're flying <laughs> You know me so well. Yes, that would totally be my number one thing. Yeah. But anyway, so what kind of software does it take to run something like this? Can I run it from my Windows 10 laptop? Uh, 3D printers, you can run from just about anything nowadays. So oh. so with 3D printing, it's a little bit more, more complicated in most cases than just downloading a thing and pressing print. Um, you've got to go hmm. through a thing called a slicer, which gets your three-dimensional model and turns it into layers made up of line so that the... Okay. So that basically with FDM, it's a glorified hot glue gun. It lays down just a single bead of material in like a string. And the slicer hmm. tells okay. it how to do that layer by layer so you get your 3D model. Oh, okay. It's really cool. And they have that for, they have slicers that you can use on Android. They have them for iOS, Windows. Wow. So you can literally print from your phone. You can print from your phone. Yeah. Actually, some of the, the printers nowadays, they have more of a curated experience where you can get specific 3D files. And as long as you're using them with the printers that they've already vetted them for, you can literally press a button in a web browser and your already registered 3D printer will just start printing. Whoa. It's really cool. So like there's there's a ton of different programs out there. Um, most of them actually work for any major uh, desktop distribution you would be using, whether that be Linux, Mac or Windows. All of those will work. Cura, Simplify 3D are two of the biggest ones and another one called actually Slicer, but the E is a three in there because that's how we name it. <laughs> I, I do enjoy the numbers as letters in nerd slang. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So so that, <laughs> that's the kind of software that you that you generally need to run on, is is a slicer of some sort so that your printer actually knows okay. what to do. That would make sense. Absolutely. Um, so where do you get the files to print? Like, I know you go to Word to make a Word document. Where do you go to get a 3D something? So actually, there's a ton of websites on the Internet just for getting 3D thing. Um, one of the most popular and it's been around for the longest is a site called Thingiverse by a company called a MakerBot. Most people, when they've heard of 3D printers, have probably heard of a MakerBot at some point. And they started up a website where people can upload three-dimensional files that you can download and print for yourself. Um, yeah, there's there's another company that I really like called My Mini Factory, um, which is is oh. awesome. Um, some of the the community on there puts up some of the high highest quality stuff I've ever seen. Um, they specialize mm. in more um, not necessarily like a uh, mechanical kind of thing, but more more display objects and props. A lot of them are cosplayers and they they give you the files to 3D print your own cosplay props, which is awesome. Yeah. Who doesn't love an awesome printed sword? Yeah, seriously. To go with your costume. Exactly. There is an other option if you're not wanting to just download one or you can't find it. You can make your own. Um oh. and that requires some 3D modeling skills in the form of either something like Blender or or CAD program, but that's kind of complicated for most people, and, and it's something you get into down the road. Gotcha. So basically, either you're like an architect who already knows how to use a CAD software of some form, or you just find things on the internet already. Yeah. Um, most people find things on the internet in the form of knickknacks and stuff and print them out because it's just a ton of fun. Being able to, <laughs> to see a thing on a computer and go... That I want that thing and that thing then be in your hands like, you know, well, many hours later. But yeah, 
So how long, say I wanted a four inch tall TARDIS, how long would it take to print something like that? Um, with with a four inch tall kind of thing, um, there's there's a ton of different factors dependent on what kind of quality you want out of it. You can you can print something really fast and really dirty and it not end up looking as good, but it comes out really quick. And, okay. and you can have like something on the scale of like, say, four inches. The height of the object actually makes a big difference with how long it takes. Hmm. Many things will basically the X and Y direction. So width and kind of breadth of the object, they can print really quickly in. But printing upwards takes a long time for most things. So four, four inches could take a number of hours, six, seven, eight. Sometimes if you're looking at good quality print, they can take up to, you know, 20, 30 hours sometimes. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. So you say that there's different materials too, like the the one in your news article listed concrete, but you say plastic. So so if you're printing at home, you're gonna print in plastic. That's that's generally oh. that's generally what you're gonna end up with, or some form of a modified plastic. There's many different types of plastic. I won't get into them, but there are some really cool things <laughs> like plastics with um, particles that glow embedded in them, things with carbon fibers Ooh. in them, uh, even uh, powdered metals up to like 75% mixed with plastic in order to get a thing that feels and weighs like a metallic object. Interesting. So you could kind of print like a pewter mini or something? Yep. Along those lines? Yeah, you can print things. Uh, one of the most popular ones are uh, different types of like iron or steel. Because it will mm. rust like real steel and you can actually do different things like uh, there's some prop making methods to quickly rust an object. Uh, you can rust things and make them look super cool. Uh, that's a really popular wow. thing. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Intentional rust. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's fun. There's, it's, it's really cool to get into some different types of materials and see what you can do. They've got flexibles, even things that will squish up and, and they act like rubber. It's, it's super cool. Interesting. Yeah. You can make your own bouncy balls. Y you can. Um, Maybe. Yeah, you can make your own bouncy balls. They'll bounce pretty well if they're thick enough. It, it really depends huh. on, on how you design it or, or what you're actually printing. Interesting. Yeah. So, like, in the future, is this something that's just going to... Like you said, the $49 one is a thing now, but is it just going to get like cheaper and cheaper and more accessible? Or do you think there's kind of like a limit just because of how complicated it can get so it does get very complicated and i hear a lot of people throwing it around that everybody will have a 3d printer in their home and just print everything they ever need yeah i i myself i don't know if that's going to be the case because at least right now it does require if you are even if you're just downloading something off the internet and it's already somebody else or even hundreds of people have already printed it it takes a knowledge mm -hmm. of how printing works and of your machine specifically in order to get a decent result out of it. Interesting. Two people with the same printer in two different rooms can get the same file and end up with different results depending on settings they have for slicing and even room conditions. Uh, the temperature can make a huge difference, stuff like that. Uh, so well, That would make sense. Yeah. So a thing I've seen thrown around for a lot of people, and it really does look like it is the way of future, is uh, there's some rapid manufacturing techniques based on 3D printing that companies are imploring to 3D print things really quickly. And a lot of people think that it will end up as like almost like an Amazon model. But instead of Amazon oh. having warehouses full of things, they just have printers. And when you order it, it prints it on demand for you and they ship it out. Fascinating. Because because then they can invest in having people who have the expertise and really refining how the, the models are and the techniques. And and they can deliver something to you way better than than you could yourself at a much cheaper price. And you never have to worry about running out of a certain thing in stock. That's a fascinating concept. Yeah. And could potentially harm a lot of the manufacturers. It it, mm. it could. Uh there are a lot of manufacturers currently employing techniques like that. Actually some um oh. automotive trim manufacturers are using it for small bits of automotive trim with with a printer called a carbon 3D 
which is a really sophisticated printer that can print things really quickly in a production level of quality as into something you could actually attach to your car or install and it still be workable on a daily on a daily basis and they use it for replacement parts so instead of having huh. you know uh you have this one very obscure car model that has a really rare part you just order it from them and they just print one off for you and send it and they don't have to have spend all the money in keeping warehouses full of the part that they might never sell. That's actually really smart. Yeah, it, it's 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 really cool. Awesome. Yeah. I kind of like it. I, I, What's the best thing you've printed yourself? Best thing I have printed myself. Okay, it, it, it's going to sound like a really crazy thing, but the best thing I've printed for myself is my 3D printer. What? Yeah. You printed the whole thing? So so there are metal bits and stuff like that. But in the beginning days when I started, I actually in the scale of things have gotten into this rather late. I've been in the kind of 3D printing thing for about three years now. I originally oh, okay. bought a really cheap kind of kit off of eBay that honestly ah. wasn't all that good and was a, oh. wasn't that great. And you know, you could you could tell that it was some person in their garage trying to sell it to me as cheap as possible. But but from it, it gave me a thing that I could get good enough quality that I could make more bits and make a better print. So huh. the 3D printer I have now almost three years down the line is basically the descendant of that printer that over time, every single piece has been swapped out and new mounts being printed and new carriages and almost every single piece of it is now different from the original. But but through being able to 3D print, I was able to learn enough about 3D modeling and designing mechanical things that I was able to look at what other people are doing and make a 3D printer that works as good as some of the best ones out there. So that would be the thing I'm most proud of being able to 3D print. That's really, really cool, yeah. actually, that you could basically take a cheap one and just make it significantly better. Yeah, with, with Lovely. There, there's money involved in materials and time and um, being somebody who doesn't know what they're doing initially and making the wrong decisions and uh, buying parts and, you know, them not being the right parts that I necessarily needed after the fact and that sort of thing. But I th sure. but for me, the learning experience was was awesome for me at the time. The the cheapness I was able to do it at was really cool going through like places like AliExpress. If you've ever heard of them, it's like direct from China kind of sales like Wish and that sort of thing. Yes. Buying cheap, not very good electronics components off of there in order to try and cobble together <laughs> a better printer, you know? Yeah. It's really fun. And I've printed a ton of things over the years. Most of them nerdy models and knickknacks and stuff to have around my home. Very fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, Sam, where can we find you on the interwebs? Um, so I go by Samsalot007, literally anywhere. Search it, you'll find me. I don't bite, but I don't talk to people a lot, so don't feel bad. But uh, if you do get through to me, ask me anything you want. The best place to get through to me is on Twitter. Uh, send me a message over there. Uh, I'll be able to help you out or kind of send you in the right direction into 3D print because there's a lot out there and and it's really easy to get into. Um, but, you know, having somebody who can go, hey, just don't get that one because you'll regret it. It is nice. You can also find me online with uh, the Beholder's Eye podcast where hey, where I'm there with Kim and uh, we play Dungeons and Dragons. Super nerdy. Lots of fun. It is. Good story. It is. <laughs> but you can find Service Desk as always at Service Desk Pod on Twitter. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash service desk podcast. Uh, Gmail, you can email us at service desk podcast at gmail.com and send us a ticket with whatever question or request you may have of us. We always, as always, ask you to rate and review us on iTunes especially, but anywhere else that you can possibly do so. And our website, you can find us at servicedeskpodcast.com. And as always, I'm Sam. I'm Kim. And, and we're, we're your, your techie, techie friends. friends.